The difference between being a cowardly politician making excuses for Paul McCartney and being a friend is that being a cowardly politician making excuses for McCartney means living in the real world. And being a friend is a non-existence. So, um, because then I have no friends. But the, the non-existent friend would see the obvious reported accurately and above and beyond anything else in terms of legal enforcement or anything like that. They would see the obvious reported accurately. Um, and what I'm talking about is the claim that I was jealous about Leslie. And this excuses the AIDS attack. That's the explanation the British culture came up with for excusing the AIDS attack. When I was in the city of Pittsburgh and I showed the evidence for this, and I was brushed off and told, get out of here, don't pay attention. I, I knew to expect that because the people of Pittsburgh are deviant, hostile, liars, face liars, crooked, criminally insane, unjust, incapable of remorse. So I knew better than to expect anybody to care about the obvious and report it accurately. They weren't just making um, excuses for McCartney. They were making money with Shulman from, from McCartney. And the difference between me and Shulman is I'm a poet who was tortured, who struggled to write my poetry. Shulman was a thief who was caught red-handed. Oh, there's another difference. Pittsburgh loves Shulman. He juiced up the town robbing the museums of millions of dollars and making lots and laughing stocks of poets who were tortured, a poet who was tortured. The Southern of Pittsburgh hates me. So there's, there's a couple differences there. McCartney loves Shulman although he's going to distance himself now, and he hates me. And there's no excuse for what he did, because they, they used Hollywood to create their notion as a Hiroshima revenge. I mean, if you believe that Japan should be entitled to revenge against Hiroshima, why, sure, murder the old breed of the Navy. You know, and why Bush went along with it is anybody's guess, but he did go along with it. So did Obama. Make no mistake, they knew that was going to be poison in the mouth for the COVID atrocity. Well, you know, how the obvious isn't going to be reported accurately. So, but for the silent one, um, the Israelis, and the British avenging Suez in Highland Park of Pittsburgh did a note illustrating the nerve agent that they nearly killed me, which they said to get me to decide to swallow. They, this was all, and they called me a goy and uh, called me a squirrel taking out the IRE. They spelled it S Q U R L. You know, which meant the avenging the black man. But um, UW dialect. And then they did a profile of the personality change. They wrote the whole thing out. Silent one. The, the personality change chemical was predicted. In other words, I was resisting, not myself, not my bad character, not my not being rescued by Lenin on wings of desire. I was resisting the neuro compulsion, the neuropsychiatrist with a Hitler cruel madman named Casper had drilled into my psyche. I didn't touch either of these people. And the Everlying murderers behind it, 
the British eccentrics behind it, announced that because I never touched them, I was a suspicious person. And that their virginity proved that I was a rapist. And you let the British get away with that. Calling me a squirrel, calling me every being torn without even saying it was wrong. The obvious cannot be assessed accurately. Ha ha. Because that would make you non existent. 